my students have invented a new sport. It's called Robot Jenga. To play it, you first build your own remote-controlled Jenga robot. You play one-on-one. -on -one. If the tower falls over, you lose. If you take more than three minutes to make a move, you lose. We had our first competition three weeks ago, and it was awesome. <laughs> the competition was in Fab Lab Brussels. This is also the place where these robots were built. It is the prototyping lab for the Department of Industrial Engineering at my university. In it, we have a number of 3D printers, we have laser cutters, we have CNC milling machines, we have all the tools you need to make your own electronics. What we don't have are technicians. We expect our students to learn to work with those machines themselves. And we give all our students access to all our machines five days a week. We believe that they will be better engineers when they actually know how to build what they are designing. Now, I'm not here to tell you that our Fab Lab is special or unique. It's not. Fab Labs are an old idea. There are a lot of labs all over the world using the same tools, trying to do the same thing. And a lot of them are much better than me and my team. Now, I want to use this talk to ask you a question. And the question is this. Why is it that you can be 25 and a musician and be at the top of your field? And why is it that if you want to be an inventor, that does not seem to be possible? Is that because engineering is inherently more difficult and it takes you longer to learn and you're 40 years old by the time that you know what you're doing? Maybe. But I think that idea is insulting to all those kids who spend thousands of hours practicing and dicking around on that guitar. Is it? that engineering is actually a lot more like an orchestra rather than a solo performance? Maybe. Definitely a lot of large industry, a lot of engineers with experience would say, yes, that is us. Engineering is teamwork and you need a team of experts to get anything done. Or is it because the tools you need to practice your craft cost a lot more than Bob Dylan's guitar. And if that is true, what does that mean if that is changing? Because I have spent nearly 10 years trying to get access to the kind of tools we have today in our Fab Lab. When seven years ago, the first open source, low cost 3D printer was invented, I jumped at it. You suddenly you could build your own 3D printer, you could buy a kit, and there were blogs discussing how to make them better, and there was documentation and people sharing ideas, and it was awesome. And then Arduino happened, and suddenly you didn't have to be an electronics engineer to do electronics, and I used that tool to start building my own CNC machines. This is a small one, and we made kits of it, and then we sold those kits. And then I used that to make a really big one, because I didn't have the money to buy one. The last five years, a lot of amazing things have happened in my field. If you're interested to know more about it, I recommend Chris Anderson. I think his book is a really good introduction. But here's the thing. My students haven't read that book. My students don't know anything about what I just told you. They are 20 years old. For them, those machines have always existed. They are using tools that used to cost more than your house, and they're using it to do this. <laughs> they are having fun. They're playing. They're dicking about. 
They don't know that when we ask them to build and design and make this kind of thing work, that until very, very recently, this would have been a job for experts and it would have been very expensive to do. There's a quote from Duke Ellington I found. It reads, no one had bothered to tell me this was impossible. So I went home and just did it. And I think that quote beautifully captures the spirit of my students. They did not know it was impossible and they just did it. And don't get me wrong, a lot of them put in hundreds of hours before they got that thing working. But some of them, while doing that, discovered that this is something they love doing. Some of them put a piece of themselves in those machines. This is Jeff. I don't have a picture where Jeff is smiling. He always looks like this. <laughs> Actually, I do not have all that many pictures of Jeff. Jeff emailed me last year asking me for a good supplier of CO2 laser tubes because he was building his own laser cutter. That's the picture at the side. He's not working in my lab because he has the tools he needs to build that thing in his home. He only comes in the day of the deadline uh, to demonstrate the next iteration and the new options he built into that thing. And I cannot describe you in 20 seconds how amazingly detailed this thing is. Except to say, I can build that. I'm 39, he's 19, and he's better than I am. This is Elon. Elon is the reason my professor chemistry is very annoyed with me. And she's annoyed because she really cares about her students and she wants them to succeed, especially the first year students. But to succeed, they have to be in her class and they have to attend class. And Elon isn't doing it. He's in my lab every day building extra large Game Boys. That thing actually works. It, it plays Tetris and 2,000 other Game Boy games. It runs Linux inside. He made two of them. He sold them. He's building a third one. I'm not telling him to go get out. This is Petrion. Petriam came into our lab two years ago when he was working on the first prototype of a 3D printer he designed. Now, by now, he started his own business and he has a lot more professional looking pictures than this one, but I like this one. I like it because it shows his attic. And that attic symbolizes a hope I have for my students. A hope that with the tools they have today, that it might once again be possible for a good young engineer to take that one idea that he's passionate about, that one thing that he thinks should exist, start running with it, rent a cheap garage, spend Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours working on it, and then come out with something amazing. I know there's an enormous difference between building a prototype and starting your own business and you need business plans and accountants and marketing and investors and all that thing and everything is very complicated and it's almost impossible to get all that right when you're just out of school. But you know what? Let's not tell them. Let's not tell them that it's impossible and then maybe they'll just go off and do it. Thank you.